For today's case, we discuss when a person can be retried for the same crime. In this case, a person was tried, but tried in the wrong place, the wrong venue. Can we retry them in the correct venue, or does that pose a double jeopardy problem? Let's get started with this. Timothy Smith was indicted in the Northern District of Florida for theft of trade secrets from a website owned by the company Strike Lines. Before trial, Smith, Smith moved to dismiss the indictment for lack of venue, signed the Constitution's venue clause and its vicintage clause. Smith argued the trial in the Northern District of Florida was improper because he'd accessed Strike Lines' website from his home in Mobile, which is in the Southern District of Alabama, and the servers storing the data were located in Orlando, which is in the Middle District of Florida. The district court concluded that factual disputes relating to venue should be resolved by the jury and deny the motion to dismiss without prejudice. The jury found that Smith guilty and Smith, Smith moved for a judgment of acquittal based on improper venue. The district court denied the motion, reasoning that the effects of the crime were felt as strike lines headquarters, which were located in the Northern District of Florida. Hmm. On appeal, the 11th Circuit determined that venue was improper, but disagreed with Smith that the trial in the improper venue barred re-prosecution. The 11th Circuit therefore vacated the conviction for theft of trade secrets. Okay, so can we retry the guy in the right case, place? The Constitution permits the retrial of a defendant following a trial in an improper venue conducted before a jury drawn from the wrong district. Except as prohibited by the Double Jeopardy Clause, has long been the rule that when a defendant obtains reversal of prior unsatisfied convictions, he may be retried in the normal course of events. So yes, if your conviction is reversed, for example, because of evidentiary problems, like they didn't give you the evidence, then typically you can be retried. We'll give you the evidence and you get another go. All right, in all circumstances outside the Speedy Trial Clause, the strongest appropriate remedy for trial error is a new trial not a judgment that bars re-prosecution. Text and precedent provide no basis for concluding that violations of venue and vicinity's clause are exceptions to the retrial rule. The venue clause mandates that trials of all crimes shall be held in the state where the crimes have been committed. Nothing about the language suggests a new trial in a proper venue is not an adequate remedy for the violation. Smith argues primarily that the venue clause aims to prevent the infliction of additional harm on a defendant who's already been undergoing the harm of the initial trial in a distant, improper place. I mean, there are a lot of expenses and also your time and energy and a lot of other things, so there is some harm from being put on trial. But mere burden of a second trial has never justified an exemption from the retrial rule. Too bad, so sad. Indeed, while the most convenient trial venue for a defendant would presumably be where he lives, the venue clause is keyed on the location of the alleged crime. The clause does not allow variation for the convenience of the accused, and this court has repeatedly rejected objection based on hardships created when the defendant is prosecuted far from home. The vicintage clause, which guarantees the right to an impartial jury of the state and district where the crime shall have been committed, similarly provides no support for Smith's argument that retrial is barred. The vicintage clause differs from the venue clause in two ways. It concerns jury composition, not the place where the trial can be held, and it constitutes the district where the crime was committed rather than the state. Nothing about these differences dictates a remedy that's broader than the one awarded when the venue clause is violated. The vicinage clause is only one aspect of the jury rights provided by the Sixth Amendment, and this court has repeatedly acknowledged that retrials are appropriate remedies for violations of other jury trial rights. Most analogous to this case, the court has held retrial is an appropriate remedy when the defendant is tried by a jury that does not reflect a fair cross-section of the jury. So, for example, if they're biased, or for example, the, the prosecutor kept out all the people of a particular race or all the people of a particular sex, among other things. So if the jury is not a fair composition, then get a new jury and let's try again. There's no reason that to conclude the trial before a jury drawn from the wrong geographic area demands a different remedy. The historical background of the venue and vicinage clauses similarly does not demand reach departure from the rule. The common law of vicinage right presumptively entitles defendants to a jury of a neighborhood where the crime was allegedly committed. As a practical matter, this right imposed a venue requirement. Trials need to be held at a location, the matter of fact, issuable, allegedly to occur to the allowed to the inhibitions whereof to serve on a jury. History reveals that common law of vicinage's rights were highly prized by the founding fathers, and this right undoubtedly inspired the venue and vicinage's clauses in the Constitution. 
Although the clauses is adopted to part in some respects from the common law, most notably by providing new specifications about the place where a crime may be tried, there's no meaningful effort to support the contention the Constitution altered the remedy prescribed by common law for violations of the right. So although it does modify the common law slightly, the remedy is the same remedy the common law recognizes, merely a do-over. By the time of the founding, compelling evidence supported the conclusion that pleas of prior acquittal or conviction could not be grounded on a verdict issued in or returned by a jury of a wrong vicinage. Judicial decisions and prominent treatises of the time and since reflect no common law principle at the founding that preclude retrial found in a trial found in improper venue or before improper jury. Indeed, indeed, this court embraced this retrial rule for venue error, and this decision did not break new ground. This strongly implies that even if you're found not guilty, they can retry you. If they found that they tried you in the wrong place. Hmm. The court has found that Smith points to no decision barring retrial based on successful venue or vicinage objection, either centuries of common law, predating the founding or earlier years of practice following ratification. The absence alone is considerable evidence that clauses do not bar retrial in their own forces. Moreover, courts affirmatively allow retrial following trials in improper venue or before improperly constituted juries. This leaves no reason to doubt the retrial rule appeals here. The court rejects Smith's argument that double jeopardy clause is implicated by retrial in a proper venue. A judicial decision on venue is fundamentally different from a jury's general verdict of acquittal. When a jury returns a general verdict of not guilty, its decisions cannot be upset by speculation of such matters by courts. I'd like to take note here that the Supreme Court just used the phrase jury's general verdict of acquittal. And because it's impossible for the courts to be certain about grounds for the verdict without impermissibly delving into jury deliberations, the basis for the jury verdict cannot be ground for setting aside the acquittal. Generally, verdicts of acquittal are thus consistent with the rule that culpability is the touchstone for determining whether retrial is permitted. Under that rule, when a trial determinates with the finding of the defendants, criminal culpability has not been established, retrial is prohibited. Conversely, retrial is prohibited when a trial terminates on the basis unrelated to factual guilt or innocence of which the offense is accused. For example, a jury deadlock. So trial can be done in those circumstances. Similarly, reversal of conviction based on violation of venue or vicinages clause, even when styled as judgment of acquittal, plainly does not resolve the bottom line question of criminal culpability. In this case, the 11th Circuit's decision venue was improper, did not adjudicate Smith's culpability, and thus does not trigger the double jeopardy clause, Alito delivering the opinion for a unanimous Supreme Court. Thus, that brings us to the end of this case, dealing with whether or not you can be retried twice. In this case, this person was found guilty, but by a court in the wrong place. And much like other injuries where a person is found guilty, retrial is permissible. So we can retry the defendant. The same as if we had, you know, not given you the evidence. You know, we committed a Brady violation. No problem. Here's the evidence. Let's try again. We did a bad on the, con the, con the, the jury. No problem. Let's try again. There is some language here that sort of implies that even if you're found not guilty, that they can retry you. The, jury, the Supreme Court tries to take that back in the back half. But I imagine someone somewhere is going to try this at some time. Oh, we tried you in the wrong place. You're found not guilty and all, but it's the wrong venue. And the Supreme Court said that we can retry you. There's language that allows for that. So the Supreme Court themselves opened up a problem for the future someday. But that's where we are right now. So we'll deal with that problem another time. And that, for the moment, brings us to the end of discussion of that story.